Today, we look at low-fidelity asset creation in Blender. Create almost anything in lo-fi with ease, often only using a single low-res image as reference. We'll talk about what low-fidelity means and why or when to use it. We'll cover this technique in depth as we recreate this plastic crate and fill it with fruit. First, we need an image of a plastic crate. Try to find something that's straight on and doesn't have extreme glare in it. We can work with anything, but give yourself a good start. The key here is not to spend so much time on this first step that you defeat the purpose of this whole exercise. The more you do this, the more you'll know what to look for. For our purposes, you can use my image, which is linked in the description. Bring the image into Blender by dragging it into Blender. Clear the rotation and position with Alt-R and Alt-G. Rotate it into place and add a cube. Scale and extrude to roughly fit the shape of the crate. Now delete the top face. In a few seconds, we're pretty much already done with modeling. Add a new material and make the crate image the base color. Press U for unwrap and select cube projection. Now let's look at the UV map. We have the front, back, two sides, bottom lip, and the floor of the crate. Let's start lining everything up. This isn't an exact science. For the bottom and the lip, just scale them down and place them on a blank spot within the crate image. Now for the holes, plug the image into the alpha. Use a ramp to make everything that's a hole black and everything that's not a hole white. Adjust the UV map to avoid unwanted dark parts of the image. In edit mode, select the top rim, extrude it in and down a bit. Select these two new face loops and box project. Place them within an empty area of the image. You can add a bevel modifier to smooth out sharp edges. Now let's create a stack of crates with the array modifier. If you notice more repeating textures now, take some time to adjust the UV maps appropriately. Our model and texture is already done. Next, we'll add some chaos and randomness. We want every new crate to be a new color, so let's separate out the crates. To do this, apply the array and press P to separate by loose parts. Now, in the shader editor, add an object info node and a mix RGB node. Change from mix to color, plug the crate texture into slot 1, and plug random into slot 2. This gives a random value to every new object. Nothing happens yet because we need some color information. Drop in a color ramp node. From here, add a bunch of stops, then distribute the stops from the left. Now you can start selecting random colors. Make the interpolation mode constant so there isn't any in-between fading going on. This is changing the hue and saturation of each crate, but it's not really taking the value into account. For that, we need to duplicate the mix RGB node, change it to multiply, and plug it into the second input. Now play around with different colors until you're happy. You can even select a palette of colors to stay within the theme of your scene. If you want to make broad adjustments to all colors, just drop down a hue saturation value node. Now every time you make a new crate or stack of crates, there'll be a new color. This is a powerful technique you can use to randomize all sorts of things. Let's take it a step further and randomize some dirt texture. Just add a simple noise texture. Change it to 4D noise so it gives us this extra seed value. You'll see why in a moment. Multiply the noise against the basket color, play with the color ramp and the strength until it's at a good level. Less is more, so keep it subtle. Now, the noise is the same on every object, which isn't very convincing at all. To randomize it, plug the random node into the W slot on the noise. This randomizes the seed on every individual crate. For our final texturing trick, we'll fade the edges of the basket slightly, like the plastic is getting old. Add a geometry texture node and a ramp. Plug in pointiness and view the output. Pointiness doesn't always give the cleanest result, but it's perfect for our low fidelity approach. Play with the ramp until just the edges look faded. Add a mix RGB node. The pointiness ramp goes into the factor. Add the same input in both slots. But with the second slot, change the hue, saturation, and value. Let's make it a little less saturated and brighter, like it's fading. 
you may need to further adjust your pointiness ramp to get the result that you want. For the roughness and bumpiness of the basket, we're just going to use the original image with a ramp. Adjust it until you're happy. Note that for the bump node, you may need to turn your distance way down. Now you have endless stacks of random plastic crates, and since you know how to make them, you have the power to adjust them for any scene. To make the fruit, we'll be using nearly the exact same method. I'm using one add-on for dropping the fruit called Physics Dropper, which I'll link in the description. You can do it with the standard Blender Rigid Body Physics, but this just automates a few steps, which is nice. Rather than cutting to a time lapse, I realize some people want to watch every step, so feel free to mute the video, play your own music, and adjust YouTube to play whatever speed you want. I'll let you know when I'm coming back by marking it in the YouTube chapters. Welcome back. I hope you feel the power of creating assets from nothing but a single image. Now you're ready to tackle the world of lo-fi 3D. Thanks to everyone who watched this video. 
If you want to show some support, I am starting a Patreon account. You may have noticed the long gap in between my videos. That's because I take a bunch of freelance on and generally just have to stay pretty busy. But if you want to see my videos more frequently and you want to see more videos, please consider contributing over there. I'd love nothing more than to spend more of my time teaching Blender. Thanks again, and I'll see you around in the community.